By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome at another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have more magic for you from uh, from Dwarven Warriors Cup in Fort House of the Netherlands. That's what I wanted to say. And on the left we have Wilfred who is playing white and red. So you can expect to see Savannah Lions, White Knights, uh, Mesa Pegasus, all those uh, creatures that you expect in kind of a pink weenie deck and for the finish he's also playing with beautiful Sarah Angels and of course direct damage lightning bolts disintegrates fireballs all the usual suspects you can find in Wilfred's deck and talking about direct damage his opponent today is Lucas and he's also playing with red he's playing with red and green and what he can do better than Wilfred I guess is ramp because he's playing with green he's playing with four Lanoir elves and he's playing with birds of paradise so there's a lot of ramping going on and what does he want to ramp into well He's playing with, I believe, a full playset of Dragon Whelp. So that's a pretty cool creature. I'm looking forward to see that hitting the battlefield. And of course, he also has X spells. He's got your disintegrates and your fireballs, but he also plays with hurricanes. And that's quite interesting because of that combination Birds of Paradise Hurricane that does not always work out. Well, on the other hand, if you have to choose between killing a Sarah Angel or two and losing your Birds of Paradise in the process or just taking four damage, eight damage, you know, etc then the better option obviously is playing the Hurricane. And of course, Hurricane can be a great finisher as well if you're ahead of life, of course, because it also hurts you in the process. Okay, so that's uh, that's about it uh, when we talk about the decks. Let's just quickly go to game one because I'm really looking forward to this matchup. Let's go to the games. And here we go, and there is the dice roll to decide who gets to start. It looks like, I believe, Lucas has the highest roll. He's sitting on the right side, and he's the player with the uh, red and green deck. And Wilfred is sitting on the left, and he's playing with the uh, pink weenie deck, white and red. And uh, I can only see a Savannah Lions here is trying to show his hand. And Lucas is doing the same. Oh, Lucas' hand is looking really good. I saw that wild growth. I saw a lot of elves. I saw a green mana, a red mana. That is actually pretty nice. He can really ramp into something big. So that uh, that is going to be difficult. He's also on the play. And Wilfred, so being on the draw, you're looking at his new seven. Is he going to keep it? I see a lot of white cards. I saw a lightning bolt there and some planes. I don't think I saw a, um, a red mana. And there he's playing a Savannah Lines passing turn here. There is Red from Lucas. Does he have an answer for the Savannah Lions? Maybe a Lightning Bolt or a Fireball for one. Does he want to, of course? That's another question. Let's see what he's going to do. Looks like he's uh, a little bit in the tank here. And there is a Wild Grove. And there is a Disintegrate killing the Savannah Lions here. And there's also a Script Sprite as a follow-up. And yes, that... Oh, he used the Lanoir Elf, of course, to cast the Script Sprite, so he didn't deal any damage. And Wilfred here casting a White Knight, which is quite strong, at least against the Lanoir Elves. But, of course, the Script Sprites can fly. So that's the first damage here going to Wilfred in this game. So he's dropping down to 19. Another two. There is the Mesa Pegasus. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there's some glare here, so we can't really see it. But it is at least a 1-1 Flyer, so it could block the Script Sprites, but he doesn't want to trade. And that means he's dropping to 18 here. And look at that. There is a Dragon Whelp. Ooh, and I think because we saw a Lightning Bolt in Wilfred's opening hand, I think he really needs a red mana. One red mana. And he can deal with that pesky Dragon Whelp. Because next turn, Lucas is probably going to attack here with both of his Flyers. And remember, those Birds of Paradise can also generate red mana. And he decides to trade, probably going to take five. You're actually only taking two, but that's maybe even bad, more bad news. Exactly it is. Even more problems here for Wilfred. Another Dragon Whelp. And this is a Crusade hitting the board. Attacking here a 3-3 first striker now because of that Crusade. So Lucas is taking damage, dropping here to 15, but that doesn't really matter. He can attack with two Dragon Whelps. And he's got quite a lot of red mana. Now also putting his Lanoir Elf in the red zone. 
And, oh, look at that. Wait a minute. Giant Grove is four damage. He's pumping four extra damage into the whelps. So that's eight plus the power from those 12 damage in one turn. Wow. And we see Wilfred uh, dropping here to five life. I believe he's playing another White Knight. Unfortunately, there's a lot of glare on that side of the table. Again, an attacker. I think this is it. This is done. Wow. What a fast game one. Look at that hand. If he could have... If he could have found one measly mountain, he could have killed both of those dragon whelps with those two lightning bolts in hand. Very, very unlucky. Uh, we're going to let these players sideboard and then we'll catch up with them in game uh, number two. Game number two is about to start. So Lucas has taken that first game. Let's hope for Wilfred that he can find some red mana so that he can at least play out his lightning bolts. And look at that, that looks like a very good hand. Did I see a soul ring there? I think I saw a soul ring, planes, a mountain. Interesting here, not playing out the soul ring passing turn and there's a wild growth from Lucas on his land. So good start for him as well. Let's see, did he have a soul ring? Maybe I didn't see it correctly, but he does. And there is the soul ring hitting the table. He does, ooh, wow, this is pretty good here from Lucas. One turn, three creatures hitting the board, two script sprites and a Birds of Paradise. So that means some damage. And oh, 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 balance, balance. So that means all the creatures are gone now, but Wilfred will also need to discard something. There's an Armageddon gone and a Disenchant gone for Wilfred and passing turn. Now there is a Dragon Whelp. Pretty good creature from Lucas. Did a lot of work in that game number one. But now Wilfred has at least red mana to Put some direct damage on that whelp if need be. Attacking here with the dragon whelp and there is a swords to plows here. So in this game we already see a lot more removal coming from the side of Wilfred and really kind of doing what uh, white can do really well that is controlling the board. And now a lot of our elf has hit the table on the side of Lucas and Wilfred is just passing turn. Cannot find any land. He's kind of stuck here. He needs a second white to get going with that White Knight and Sarah Angel in hand, but he just can't find it, it seems, and he has to pass the turn here. And uh, of course, what do you do then? Well, you're gonna cheers and uh, probably get some new beers because those bottles look pretty empty. And there's also the attack from Lucas, by the way, so I'm, I'm pretty much expecting Wilfred here to drop in life, although it's just a little. Uh, it looks like this, this second game is more balanced. Both players have enough lands. Well, that's actually not true. Wilfred still needs a second planes. And let's see what he can uh, what he can find. He's just passing turn again. Wow, that is pretty brutal here for, for Wilfred. And now he has to take the damage. He's on 18. That means he's going to drop to 17. And there is a Granite Gargoyle, another flyer here. Finally, the second white. Now let's see what Wilfred can do with this. First, he's going to take care of the flyer there with a disintegrate passing turn again. So lots and lots of removal here from Wilfred in game number two. Again, that attack. Oh, look at this. Giant Grove and a Berserk. That means eight damage for Wilfred. And I just love the fact that Lucas's deck is just so explosive. We saw that in game number one as well, where he dealt huge amounts of damage in just one single turn. I believe it was 12 damage. But here's a beautiful play from Wilfred. A fantastic, gorgeous Sarah Angel hitting the board here. And let's see what Lucas has as an answer. Okay, so he's going to disintegrate this. Oh, he's not doing the series. He's going off for the life total. And if, I, if I'm Vilfred, I would get really nervous right now. If he's going on your life total, if he untaps, will there be a second fireball or disintegrate to finish the job? There we see a white knight, a lot of glare, and also the attack by the Sarah. And that puts Lucas on 20 life. Let's see what happens next here. Is this the last turn going through his graveyard? There is a fireball. I believe he doesn't have enough though. It's a fireball of five. Wilfred dropping to just one measly life. What can he do? There is a crusade. So that means that he can deal actually deal eight damage in this turn. So that means Lucas will drop to 12. I mean, if he's lucky and Lucas cannot find any direct damage, there is a script sprites. And ooh, Wheel of Fortune, what a beautiful card. Quick Lightning Bolt on the script sprites. Both players are going to draw. Ooh, and it's looking very dire for Wilfred here. And ay, Hurricane. That's game. I thought maybe if Wilfred has, but he had his white land tapped, didn't he? I thought maybe if he has a sword, he does actually. He could have played a sword on his own Sarah, and then he could have survived one more turn. But 
he, he took the aggressive route, which is also very understandable. And uh, wow, 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 wow. Wilfred losing here. Oh, zero games against two games for Lucas. Congratulations, Lucas, with your victory. Uh, both of these players, beautiful decks. And, and also kind of, I saw a fork there on Lucas' side, one of my, my favorite cards in red. And uh, well, this was it. This was uh, another round from the Dwarven Warriors Cup. Next week, we will start with the top eight. So if you enjoy these decks, this type of magic, come back next week on Tuesday where we have another match from the Dwarven Warriors Cup. We are starting with the quarterfinals. And also on Friday, we of course still have more old school magic for you from the Raging Bull series. For now, thank you very much for watching. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so by leaving a comment, uh, leaving a like, sharing this video on your socials, and if you're not a subscriber yet, then can you please subscribe because that really, really helps. Another way to support the channel is by becoming a sponsor. You can do that by becoming a channel member, but you can also support the channel, what we do here at Timmy Talks on Patreon. There's probably a card popping up right now and you can join us on Patreon. We do a lot of fun stuff on the Patreon page. We organize tournaments, we've got a Discord chat, uh, you know, we make all sorts of nonsense decks. We had a Fallen Empire tournament. We had a budget tournament. We had, uh, you know, we're going to have quizzes. There's just so much going on there. So if you love old school, check out Timmy Talks on Patreon and consider joining. Talking about Patreon, let's take a look at the end scroll and let's take a look at my fantastic, wonderful, amazing patrons. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.